We're here on the patio of our apartment in Assisi, Italy, which is a picturesque city with many layers and hidden secrets. We'd like to show you a few of them. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, hi, I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. And one of the first things that you'll notice when you come to Assisi is the fact that it is on a hill yeah. and it is very picturesque. It's beautiful. It looks like a fairy tale. The hills will be challenging, but there's layers of the city that we discovered that I didn't expect at all. Unless you're driving a car, which we don't necessarily recommend, Probably the way you're arriving into Assisi is via train. Trains are really affordable in Italy and they're very common to use as transportation between the cities. One of our paths, we came from Puglia. So we're coming from the south, coming up through Rome to Assisi. And you go through Roma Termini. Roma Termini is a big terminal for trains. And one of the things we found out is that there are certain lines that go to Assisi that are kind of on the other end of the train station. So the main terminal lines, the platforms, and then 1S and 2S are these platforms that are 15 minute walk away. So if you're going through Rome when you're coming to Assisi, make sure you give yourself a little bit more time. Right, especially it's listed as 1S and 2S. And I actually thought that that meant estimated so, <laughs> so that, that it wasn't yeah. actually uh, platform one. Right. It was estimated to be platform one. That's not actually no, correct. No, we were waiting for the platforms to get set. It's like, they're still estimated. It's like, oh, those are real platforms. Okay. And for us, because we were making a connection, which was very short, we actually missed our train. And it turns out that as long as you have a ticket, you can get on the next train. And even though a conductor will always check your ticket, they don't have any problem with you connecting on an earlier or later train. Right, we went to the info booth and just made sure. It's like, hey, we missed this train because the last one came in late. And they're like, oh, just get on the next train. You don't have to come here. <laughs> and the train station, fortunately, does have last minute customer service booths in case you have any questions about a train you're about to get on. So when we arrived in Assisi, it was a little bit late at night and we were a bit confused about whether we could catch the bus or not. And it looked like from the table that it was going to be like 45 minutes before a bus would show up. So we actually took a taxi ride, which was about a 15 euro cost to get to, uh, to our spot in Assisi. If you take the Line C bus from the train station, it's much cheaper and much easier. It's also like 15 minutes and it costs uh, one euro 30 if you can buy the tickets ahead of time. I think it's like two euro if you're buying them on the actual bus itself. The problem at night also was that the booth that normally sells bus tickets was closed. So we sucked it up and paid the money for the taxi that time. But it's not a problem. And yeah. in fact, there's a phone number that you can contact. And the way I did it was using WhatsApp, right. which is very convenient, especially if you're not comfortable speaking um, in <laughs> English or worrying that Italian, yeah. there'll be a, any kind of communication issue. The taxis are actually more like minivans. Yeah. And so you'll likely find that somebody else may also be traveling along with you. And in that case, we got a reduced price of 10 euros. So we each paid 10 euro and it worked out yeah, fair. The, the couple that was there, they were trying to figure out how to get to town the same as us. And it's like, yeah, that's nice. We both jumped in the same cab. Assisi is a great little town, but there's also a bunch of other small towns that are worth seeing. We actually have um, an upcoming episode on our day trip to Spello and a day trip to day trip to Rome that you won't want to miss either. As Judy mentioned earlier, this town is beautiful. It's uh, like out of a fairy tale with a lot of hills and, and beautiful streets. And the brickwork and the stonework in this town is gorgeous. The buildings apparently used to be covered by plaster, but now they've stripped the plaster on most of them. And you can see the pink and gray stones, which are just lovely and add to the romantic feeling of the city. One of the things that surprised us is that there's an amphitheater here. However, it's in someone's backyard. So there are walls, so you could see where it was. Uh, obviously, they aren't as high as they were when they were originally being used. There's also an aqueduct, and like it's got grass. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't think that such an important archaeological piece of history would just be someone's yard. The main square here was originally a Roman forum. Yeah, when you walk in the piazza, you don't realize what's underneath it. But several feet down, 
is the original Roman surfaces and the original Roman Forum. There's a temple as you walk into town. It was originally built in the first century AD. Yeah, it's a temple of Minerva, they think. It was reclaimed in the fifth century AD by the Benedictine monks for their own purposes. Which was actually a good thing because it saved the temple from being torn down. They kind of convinced them, said, look, no, no, we'll repurpose it. It'll save the church money. And in the 15th century, the inside of the church had become a Catholic church in the Baroque style. You can actually go into the Roman Forum and Archaeological Museum, which is only five euro a person, and it's well worth it. In fact, there's a film that plays that recreates what the Forum and the temple originally looked like so that you could kind of see the buildings and all of the layout. And if you happen to go to Google and see that the film says that it's not it doesn't have subtitles. That's incorrect. It actually does. Yeah, and there are some reviews that say it's not very good, but those are really old. It's it's much better now. I believe it was first uh, uncovered in 2010, and they started building it up from there. So it's had a lot of years to improve. There's, there's walkways in there that you can go through and see all the parts of the forum. There's actually still the crypt which has its base and they don't have the it's the statues that were in it originally but there's drawings of those too and there's actually still the staircases that you can see in the wall that would lead up to the temple of Minerva. It's kind of amazing that you're walking under the piazza that you're just on and you're basically in Roman times now looking at all these different artifacts looking at the Roman tribunal which had seats on it. One of the worthwhile things is when you are here in the off season there was almost nobody in this museum, so it was great to be able to have it nearly to ourselves. In fact, we had to go back and watch the film a couple times because we saw something. We're trying to get our bearings because it doesn't seem possible that all this is in the same spot it was in the first century BC. And when you go up back on to the Piazza proper, you can see the outline, which is in white stone. Yeah, you can see the wall, you can see where the stairs are, you can see where the uh, tribunal was, and in fact, a restaurant was repurposing the outline for the uh, tomb <laughs> as their seating area. <laughs> so while not an actual uh, specialty of Assisi, one of the things that we always enjoy when we are in Italy is grabbing a cappuccino and a pizzetta. Standard place. Cappuccino, pizzetta, margarita. And I love how they cut it up for us in four pieces. These are a little bit different in that they have an extra little bit of salt on them and they're nice and crunchy. They're really delicious. So since bacon and eggs aren't a typical Italian breakfast, these are a little bit savory and delicious if you're not in the mood for something sweet. Right, and I actually like the size of them. They're, they're nice and small and round. They do have other ones that are thicker. And More of focaccia bread. Yeah, and when you get those, it's like, ah, eh, not exactly what I want with my cappuccino. But, but they're still good. <laughs> they're still good. I mean, it's, it's still Italian food. <laughs> if you are in the mood for a sweet treat in the morning, one of the things that we recommend is the Umbrian dessert called Rocciata di Assisi. And it is a strudel-like pastry with apples and walnuts and almonds and cinnamon, and it's delicious. We were delighted in Assisi to find out that there's no shortage of restaurants here. In fact, right outside of our Airbnb, there's a restaurant. There's restaurants all up and down the street we're on. We had trouble actually picking which restaurant we wanted to go to because we're not here that long. So it's like, which one shall we hit? So if you like restaurants, this is a great city for that. One of the things we couldn't find were street food vendors. So I think that during the winter months, they've all gone off and aren't in Assisi. Yeah, if you know where Italians go during the cold months. We'd love to hear about that. Let us know in the comments. At some point, we may want to live in Italy, and we would like to know yeah, where, where we go to, to where get we, warm. Where we warm up? <laughs> One of the other things that surprised me about Assisi is how many churches they've packed into this city. It's got a rich history of Catholicism, and one of the most well-known churches is the Basilica of St. Francis. One of the other important churches is San Damiano, which now is converted into a monastery. St. Francis originally got his vocation when he was praying in the church of San Damiano in front of one of the the crosses there. And he was born wealthy in the 1100s. Basically, God had told him to rebuild the crumbling church and embrace a life of poverty. So he gave up everything he owned in order to form a monastic order, which is called 
the Franciscans. And obviously, since he was born here, his birthplace and where he was baptized, all are very important points of interest. In fact, one of the only walking tours that we could go on this time of year was a church tour. Uh, it included a few more things, but it was predominantly the churches in the area. One of the other notable churches here is that of St. Clair, and she was one of the followers of St. Francis, who also decided to leave her wealthy family and become a poor nun. In fact, she found the Poor Clares, which is a religious order for nuns as part of the Franciscan order. And not all the churches are located within the walls of the city. The train station, like I said, is a 15-minute bus ride away. So we took a bus ride to get a train, and we had some time to kill. And we look over and see this massive church off in the distance. It was a quick walk over there, and it was the Basilica of St. Mary of the Angels, a huge church, which we unfortunately could not take any pictures of inside but the outside was still impressive. Yeah, it looks like a Roman building of great importance. I would have almost thought that maybe it was a political building or some sort of government offices, but it was a church. Yeah. And outside the church, while we were walking by it, they were actually setting up a farmer's market in the Piazza Garibaldi. One of the advantages of being in a city that's on a hill is the views you get and the farmlands around here and the valley uh, where there are more buildings and there's more of the city. It's just beautiful. I could have stood around forever and just enjoyed it all. I also didn't realize that there are huge lavender fields in Assisi. I guess I thought that most of the lavender fields would be found in France, but not. In fact, there's a couple of shops here that are all under the same name, Il Lavendetto di Assisi. And you'll know it when you see it because the entire place is consists of purple, purple everywhere. Yeah. So if you are somebody who likes lavender, I highly recommend that you check it out. If you come in June and July, there are festivals celebrating all of the lavender fields. And that's a church. <laughs> One of the many. One of the many. <laughs> the other day we tried to go to the Museo della Memoria, which is a Jewish museum, and it was closed we were a little disappointed. We didn't think we'd have enough time here to get to it. But luckily today we did make time for it and we're so glad we did. During World War II, Assisi was able to protect over 300 Jews from extermination and capture by the Germans. It was amazing the people that were involved in this. Some were German soldiers, uh, German leaders, some were mayors of the town, people that had to register as fascists, but still were fighting for the freedom of people that were persecuted, people of color, people of uh, nationality, people of faith. There were so many refugees that were coming into Assisi, and part of that was because that they believed that St. Francis would protect his city. As a result of that, the city was able to put a blanket of protection on it as being known as owned by the Holy See. And so all of the monasteries and the convents were untouchable by the Germans. Even the bishop was bringing people into his own house. Not only were people's lives preserved, which obviously that's the most important thing, but the bishop carved out holes in the walls to hide the rabbinic texts and important documents, as well as some of people's valuables to be reclaimed and given back to them after the war was over. And one of the big things that this movement did was create false identity cards, because at the time, couldn't get the food stamps off the identity card, and they had this printing press set up, and one of the workers for the city actually got the authentic cards that were blank, so that these people who were helping out could create realistic cards for the Jews to actually get food to actually survive in the town. Which also meant that some people didn't have to hide, they could go and be part of schooling. They were given background stories, they, were, they learned these uh, histories of their family so they could repeat them. It was a well-run uh, organization that protected so many people. I think what stands out most about Assisi is that it's got so much beauty in it and there's so much history that's beautiful and so much that these people have done and they're very loving and caring people. We were embraced by the city and certainly embraced by the food and everything else we enjoyed here. Yeah, we didn't mention the people, but we had people saying buongiorno uh, with this Walking hearty the greeting. Yeah. And I think we haven't always seen that in every city or country we've been in. Right. Sometimes that feels like maybe it's just an American thing. We would love for you to have the time to visit Assisi like we did and enjoy all its beauty. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing. It really helps us to grow our community. And give us a like and check out findinggenemarie.com. We have some articles there in Judy's journal and lots of other information. We'd love to hear you in the comments section as well. Until next time. Until next time.